I did an adaptation of a Shirley Jackson novel called We Have Always Lived in the Castle. And the interesting thing about the novel, it's about a young woman who at first you think is just brilliantly precocious and then you suspect that she's slightly mad and she and her sister live in a house which when it's partly burned down and the young woman comes uh, walking toward it, it looks to her like the spires of a castle, the burnt timbers and so on. So Gil said, you know what I'd like to do? He said, I'd like to create a set that wraps around the audience and at the beginning will be very realistic exterior and then we will show three rooms of the house which will look as if they've been cut by a knife so that you can see the room and the, the, with a wall coming out we'll divide them and we'll have doors that you can go through and then we'll go out the back way to a, an area which the narrator who's the young girl who's slightly cuckoo called her wilderness and he said I'd like to do that like a surrealist painting so that we go from real through various stage, stages of naturalism and finally out to surrealism. I said, that's great. And we'll put the audience in the center and the actors will shout across the audience. <laughs> so that's the way it was. And people came out, uh, the, the show sold out as soon as it opened. People said, they're crazy what they're doing over at the Hennessy. Most of the theater that we did was uh, Shakespearean productions in which the uh, acting area would be like a thrust stage and the actors that's the way it was f during the early years of the summer theater and the actors enjoyed very much going out with the audience surrounding them so they could just turn their head and be talking to everybody and no one was more than well maybe 25 feet away and it was very uh, intimate, very exciting. And we did everything, Shakespeare, uh, Pinter, Albee, just a wide variety of, of shows there. The students very quickly caught on to all the possibilities. And every year we, in January, we would have the student prize plays. And out of the playwriting class, three one-act plays would be picked and then they were turned over to the students and the students would produce, direct, design, act, promote. They were in charge of everything. And the faculty was supposed to stay away, not come in and give them any hints on what to do, let them make their own mistakes. And so the students would do everything. They would just climb up into the audience area and uh, they just knew it was a free space that they could experiment and, and try anything that they wanted to. And that was a very, a very successful time. And people still talk. Uh, Mike O'Malley, for instance, who uh, was very active, said, uh, I won two of the spots in the prize plays. And he said, each year I just loved it because we could do anything we wanted to. Work till 3 o'clock in the morning and just drive ourselves crazy. So the idea of the thrust stage and the idea of the theater in the round gives you a theater which is totally flexible. And as I said at the very beginning, the first thing an actor and a director have to settle on is how much space do you need. The problem with the proscenium theater is on the Johnson, you know it's never going to be more than 40 feet because 40 feet is the size of the proscenium opening. What they do on that stage is create miracles because the audience, there's something about a theater that if you don't tell the audience too much, they say, oh, I'm going to have to use my imagination. And that's the secret of the Shakespearean thrust stage and Shakespeare's plays is you don't need a lot of scenery because the audience comes in and they see that there are no battlements of France, they're going to have to imagine them. And once you say that to the audience, the audience gets excited because that means they're involved 
in the performance. They're involved in the production. They're involved in making all the scenes believable. And all the actor has to do is touch that with truth, and it becomes theater. Thank you for listening to our podcast. For more information, please visit www.unh.edu slash theater dance.